Hey, welcome back to the Agassino Zynga channel. Today, I'm going to do a little bit of an analysis post-match discussion regarding United's 2-1 defeat away at Valencia. The game, there was nothing quite riding on the game because we already qualified for the knockout stages, unfortunately. But there was a possibility of us winning that game and then hoping that young boys beat Juventus at home in order for us to go through as group winners. As always, with the seeding, the way it's done in knockout stages, it's quite advantageous to finish as the group winner. So then you get a quote-unquote easier tie. But if you've seen anything about United, then you know that um, guaranteeing a victory or anticipating any kind of victory, regardless of level of opponent, is very, very unlikely. And, to, and yesterday's performances was nothing short of diabolical um it's quite hard to assess united without getting hyperbolic and without uh, chanting Mourinho out and without requesting um you know six or seven players be shipped out of the club immediately but there's so many ingrained issues with the club and the team and the management structure and the boardroom that you sometimes want to see an, a change enacted on the field concerning who manages our team concerning the players that we have representing off on the pitch in the hope that somehow it's going to kickstart the changes up and above because I don't think any other manager who's actually trying to coach a side, who's actually trying to improve the players he has uh, in the team, who's actually going to try and imprint a uh, style of play is going to put up with some of the shenanigans that have been going on or that some of the stuff that Mourinho has had to, had to put up with. Um, this team was much changed. If you believe what um, Mourinho has said post-match um, regarding the match, uh, uh, regarding the team selection, then what would happen, what happened actually in that game was that he selected players, not that he didn't select the players he selected because we were already through. He selected the players he selected because those were the players that were available from the ones that were injured. So we went to Valencia with our progress and knockout stages guaranteed with a quote-unquote fully strength side. We went with the strongest side that we could put out. Um, I think a lot of talk was uh, made in the forums and in other uh, Manchester United subreddits where we were kind of hoping that he'd kind of bring on a few of the youngsters or at least start some of the youngsters. Unfortunately, that never transpired. Um, Greenwood and the other kid, Grainer, um, stayed on the bench. And for the most part, the senior players were called upon, especially when we went two goals down. Um, the, from the front to the back, we were shaky. Romero didn't look like he was brimming with confidence, but that can be understandable coming in from the cold. Deputizing for um, David De Gea is never easy. Easy. Um, Valencia on the right fullback, especially in contrast with Delo's recent performances, looked timid and as cautious as he's ever done. I think any United player, any United fan that's watched United over the last few years have said Valencia is one of the most, one of our subpar players that we have in defence and he's not good enough in order to take United through to the next level. Um, he hasn't been for a very, very long time. I'm not sure if it was a leg break. I'm not sure if it's just a crisis in confidence, but he's, he's not very... Um, He's not willing to bomb forward and to um, run into space. Too often when he gets the ball on the right-hand side of the pitch, he cuts back, he cuts back inwards, he gives the ball sideways. He never really kind of challenges his fullback. And when he does make it to the bar line, more often than not, he whips in hopeless crosses, not direct to anybody or more often than not hits the first man. Then moving on nicely into the two centre-backs um, in Eric Bailly and Phil Jones, both of who haven't really pulled up any trees since they've signed. Eric Bailly, you can maybe say he had a bit of a tiff with Mourinho which kind of led to his character confidence but Phil Jones has been at the club for the best part of five years and apart from his maybe first season where he kind of showed that he did have some sort of potential in the team so far he's very flat to deceive he's been injury prone for the most part some of his injuries that he does get yes for the most some sometimes they are due to his um uh, they are impact challenges that he kind of suffers from injuries but for the most part it's him overcompensating for his lack of positioning skills where he's having to overstretch he's having to he's having to run into spaces that he should be covering regardless and then he's he's overcompensating in the challenges which then leads to which then leads to injuries such as his calf muscles hamstring going he has he suffered way too many injuries in order to play for the top level and he hasn't showed anything when he has gotten a run of games that can um fill you with any sort of confidence and uh, as as proved with the own goal he's always got a mistake in him he's always has one error in him all the time and then you move nicely onto onto left back position marcus Rojo had a typical marcus Rojo performance he's either all action hero, all gun blazing, sliding tackles, scissor challenges from every kind of angle, or he has a completely subpar performance playing at left back. But to be honest, anyway, he's not the best left back. I think he's more comfortable playing in a back three on the, on the left hand side of a back three instead of a flat back four. I think he just gets exposed there. He hasn't got the spatial or the positional awareness in order to do that job properly. He was getting overrun time after time, and on no surprise, he get he got replaced at half time. Uh, Fred and Pereira didn't pull up any trees either. Fred specifically had a very 
very, very, very poor game. But again, I just think he was, he's been overlooked so often in teams um, when we had needed a little bit of flair, a little bit of quick interchanging passes, a little bit of dynamism in midfield, where Mourinho always kind of prefers to play Fellaini. And bringing on nicely to Fellaini, who was kind of meant to be our screen to the back four, he did a, a pretty abject job in terms of screening. Um, I've never been a big fan of Fellaini. I think Fellaini signing for United was the beginning of the end of the kind of um, our... Um, Premier League uh, dominance overall. I think he's a subpar player who to who'd be lucky to get to play for a top six side after he leaves United. I think um his skills or his attributes, which are I don't know, um, not heading the ball that well for somebody his size. He tends to uh, he tends to overly rely on chesting the ball down. He's very very armsy when he comes in a box when he wants to attack anyway. But to get the best out of Fellaini, you have to play him in a box. Anywhere outside the box, he's completely useless. He can't play football to the level that we need him to play, especially not in midfield anyway. Um, quick attacking football, um, or one two char- one two touches with um minimal with kind of minimal touches and maximum movement he just cannot do it he's too lumbering in order to kind of enact any kind of positive aspect onto the game and if you put him into the box then you're more likely not going to get a goal from him you're going to get knocked down but you're also going to be susceptible to giving away plenty of free kicks that are going to um, um, stop and start the flow of the game overall I've never been a fan of his and the sooner he goes the better but um, I'd, I'd say it's kind of Mourinho's fault for relying on him to be the screen in front of the back four I don't think he can do that job and unfortunately he was exposed again against Valencia uh, Pogba had a game to forget about as well he's got given a chance yes it's pretty evident that him and Mourinho are not getting along and he's possibly not playing to the potential that he should do because he's playing for a manager who he generally doesn't like but I still think there's a level of professionalism that needs to be um, on display in the same vein as Martial, who's had his differences with Mourinho, Rashford, who's had his con- uh, crisis in confidence with not playing through the middle, and also hasn't scored, hasn't been consistent enough for his scoring. They've shown over the last few seasons that they've, even though their performances haven't been where they need to be, they've been putting in maximum effort. And unfortunately, Pogba needs to be doing the same thing too, regardless of what's happening behind the scenes. Um, but overall, it was a pretty subpar performance and a performance that leaves you wondering what exactly we're hoping for in a game against Liverpool on Sunday. Um, I think it's ridiculous. I think it's ridiculous to suggest that we're gonna win. But Mourinho is so jammy. Mourinho has been so is so jammy and so um, fortunate in that he seems to always find a solution to deliver a pretty decent result in the big games. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if we somehow manage to squeeze through a cheeky. I don't know one nil win or two one victory away at Liverpool. I'm not. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't hold up any hope. I think Liverpool are completely on fire. Um, they've been playing well the last few. The, well, the last few games, if I can, the first in the league. And it, again, I really do hope that somehow, way or the other, regardless of what happens against Liverpool, that at the end of the season we do review the managerial situation and make a change. I know it's not all Mourinho's fault. I know the players are culpable. I know Ed Woodward's culpable, as are the Glazers. But I think in general, the doom and gloom that surrounds United, the negative vibes, the dour atmosphere, um, the lack of confidence in the players, the fact that he's fallen out with maybe six players in that squad overall, inc- including the ones we don't know about behind the scenes. I just think we need somebody to come in to kind of lift the place up a bit, give the players a bit of confidence and be able to actually accurately assess the squad that we have and make the um, necessary changes in getting people out. Because that's the thing that we, we haven't we haven't really addressed yet. There's been a lot of talk about Reno getting money to spend in January, but I think there needs to be some talk as well about the players that we're going to let go in that squad. I'd much rather we have a Fred Bear squad um, down to the bare bones than have players who are round pegs and square holes who necessarily aren't necessarily... Um, experts in any kind of role aren't necessarily the top performers in any kind of role i'd rather those places in the squad similar to what van gaal did go to young players who are actually specialists in the roles i'd rather a young right back or left back who can play in that position be on a bench as opposed to playing two retired wingers in young and and young and valencia as your uh, backup options um at fullback those are things that need to be addressed but again they need to be addressed from a manager who has a long-term vision who has a way who has a kind of an idea of how we want to play a system that he wants to kind of lock down and um and um, deliver to the players at hand and hopefully we see it coming forward in the next games but i don't actually hold up any hope 
um, and you you would hope that the, the boardroom have some kind of backbone towards him that if we did end up losing heavily against Liverpool that they'd make the changes but I don't think that's going to happen we're going to wait until it's mathematically impossible call for the top four and then Mourinho will get let go but in general it's I think it's untenable I mean Mourinho's job is untenable I think at any other top club if he was able if he were pulled in the performances that he'd done as previously has, as we've played in the last few games I think he would have been out of a job sooner rather than later if Mark Hughes got, sa- got sacked for the level performance that Southampton did against us and we were, we're not that far far ahead of them then why is Mourinho still in a job it's an absolute shocking performance I'm glad we're through regardless of the Champions League you know it's a prestigious tournament and it's knockout football you never know what can happen in the, in, in the next round but I'm not holding out any hope it's a ba- it's kind of a dour time to be a United fan but also a reminder that um, for all those knee-jerk fans out there who think you know in that, uh, change only comes off the back of managers and checkbooks I think now we've seen it's pretty evident that that is not the case you need it. there's so many facets that play into a manager being successful but once the rut starts unfortunately the manager has to go thanks so much for tuning in see you again very soon peace